Hello, welcome to my talk, the title of which is Neisseria gonorrhea growth is inhibited by a Neisseria subflava type 6 secretion system. My name is Alan Calder and I am a PhD student at Professor Laurie Snyder. We both work at Kingston University in the Biomolecular Science Department. I'll start with a little bit of project background. So the type 6 secretion system, or T6SS in Neisseria subflava, was first identified by Professor Laurie Snyder. This was during investigations to identify virulence genes and novel gene clusters in four commensal Neisseria species isolates. These findings were presented at the IPNC conference in 2018, but since then I've added to the data and the results have been published in Microbial Genomics. I continued analysis for the type 6 secretion system and expanded this to include all other Neisseria species. As a result of these analyses, I find there are two main types of type 6 secretion system as well as a subtype within the commensals. And these have been called T6SSA, B and BI, where BI is the subtype. Characteristics of each type have been described and published and that was in 2023. Based on the current genomic data, these systems aren't present in the Neisseria species pathogens. In regard to the aims of the current investigations, type 6 secretion systems are well known for their ability to translocate toxins into the prokaryotic and or eukaryotic cells. For this reason we wanted to determine if the type 6 secretion system type A of Neisseria subflava strain KU1301 had an antibacterial effect against Neisseria gonorrhea. In addition, we wanted to knock out an essential type 6 secretion system gene to demonstrate the function of the T6SS. I'll give a brief overview of the type 6 secretion system. So these are large structures that bridge gram negative cell envelope. They usually form from 13 core proteins which associate into subcomplexes. These are known as the membrane complex, the base plate complex and the tubular sheath complex. The when assembled type 6 secretion systems do resemble inverted phage that extend outwards from the cell surface. Assembly of the T6SS starts with positioning of membrane protein TSSJ. This is followed by TSSM and TSSL. You'll see here tag L is an accessory protein that in some systems is found fused to TSSL. So that's the membrane complex and once formed it docks with the base plate complex which consists of TSSE, F, G and K. And these associate the trimer of TSSI or VGRG at its centre. VGRG protein is often found capped by something called PAR and PAR provides a sharpened tip to VGRG spike. Extending below the base plate complex, rings of HCP or hemolysin co-regulated protein form. And these are then surrounded by TSSB and C. The whole tube and sheath complex is then capped by a protein called TSSA. Firing of the type 6 secretion system upon a specific hue in this case I've shown a prey cell, the secretion system fires and it pushes the spike of VGRG and PAR which are often loaded with toxins into the prey cell. Should the prey cell not have a gene that encodes a protein required for immunity, that cell will most likely die. Following injection of the toxins, part of the system disassembles. The TSSB and C proteins disassemble, and this is helped through the actions of an ATPase known as CLPV or TSSH. Some genes are essential and are required for type 6 secretion system assembly and function. It's well known that TSSM is essential for assembly and function of these systems. The negative effects of TSSM mutants or knockouts are well documented. So a minimum requirement for type 6 secretion system function is the presence of a membrane complex and TSSM is a key protein in forming this structure. We decided to knock out TSSM in Neisseria subflava KU1301. The core type 6 secretion system gene clusters are present as two clusters which we've called cluster A and B with TSSM present at cluster A. 
So we designed a splicing by overlap extension PCR assay to replace TSSM with a gene encoding canamycin resistance protein, which we've called CAN. So we've confirmed the presence of CAN within the genome at the correct location by whole genome sequencing. And we found that our TSSM knockout had canamycin resistance that was over 100 micrograms per milliliter following transformation. I'll talk about the competition assay now. The Neisseria subflavor and gonorrhea cells were removed from overnight plates. The cells were resuspended in GC broth and these were diluted to an OD of 0.5 at 600 nanometers. 10 microliters of each was then spotted in a one-to-one -one ratio on GC agar. So what we did was we spotted the Neisseria gonorrhea onto the plate first and allowed this to dry at 37 degrees for 15 minutes. Then the Neisseria subflava wild type or knockout was added on top. The spots were then grown overnight at 37 degrees in a 5% CO2 incubator. The following day the spots were removed and resuspended in GC broth and then serially diluted. 100 microliters of each dilution was spread onto GC agar that was supplemented with ciprofloxacin and this was to allow only the Neisseria gonorrhea to grow following competition. The plates were incubated overnight and then the surviving Neisseria gonorrhea were enumerated the following day. Here's an example of a competition plate with the spots and following the method just described the surviving Neisseria gonorrhea colonies can be seen on the plate and this is an example from one experiment where there are a few colonies for the wild type but more so for the TSSM knockout strain. We've carried out a number of replicates and we found that overall a significant difference exists and that's between the surviving Neisseria gonorrhea for the type 6 knockout or the TSSM knockout and the wild type strain. So the predicted toxins or effectors for Neisseria subflava strain KU1301 are a total of 10 VGRG copies within the genome and each is followed by a putative effector immunity gene pair. In terms of the type 6 effectors, these include hydrolases, phospholipases, nucleases, and genes encoding proteins with lyse M and enzymatic domains. In relation to their location on the genome, this is a figure of the Neisseria strain KU1301 genome with the core clusters A and B shown highlighted in red. A single VGRG with EI pair is encoded at one of the core gene clusters and this consists of a hydrolase followed by a hypothetical gene which is thought to encode the immunity protein to the hydrolase. The remaining nine are encoded away from the core clusters and seven of these are on a 71 kilobase genomic island and that's highlighted here as GI. So this might be a little hard to see, but what I wanted to illustrate was differences in GC content and the number and type of the DNA uptake sequence variants within these regions. So this is the 71 kilobase genomic island in Neisseria subflava, and either side are the flanking regions of a similar size, showing the differences in GC and the DNA uptake sequence variant number and type. What we also found during this analysis was the presence of diff recombinase sites and in Neisseria gonorrhea these have been shown to be involved in excision of the gonococcal genomic island. I've called these diff NS1 through to 4 for Neisseria subflava and below that in section B is part of the figure adapted from Dominiguez and Dillard 2011 showing the sequences in the pathogens as well as Neisseria lactamica. I'm going to focus on this region here. So this is a portion of the genomic island and you can see VGRG followed by a putative effector and immunity gene. And what we found is this cluster exists within this region of the chromosome, but using outward facing primers, it formed a band following PCR as well. And this is thought to be able to form an extra chromosomal circle. In addition, this region of the island can exist with the circular piece XI, as shown by that band highlighted purple. PCRs have been carried out for a number of these clusters within this region, and most of them have been shown to form these small circular forms. So in conclusion, Neisseria subflava K1301 is competent for transformation, and that extra chromosomal circular sequences may be involved in the sharing of the EI clusters between commensals with similar type 6 secretion system types.
the type 6 secretion system plays a role in Neisseria subflava KU13301 outcompeting Neisseria gonorrhea. Further understanding of the type 6 secretion system as well as its secreted products could be used as a means in the future to control infections by the pathogens. Thank you for listening. I'm now open to questions.